Ladies and gentlemen, this is Manzoor Mehman from PVC TV Network bringing you up today a political episode of our uh, uh, TV network. Uh, the fundamental theme of uh, PVC TV Network is to bring uh, public awareness, political awareness and bringing uh, different people in front of you to discuss uh, public uh, uh, problems uh, what the people are facing and uh, today in my studio uh, i've invited uh, mr mohammed uh, tahir javed uh, who is a resident of uh, beaumont uh, recently moved to houston and he's running for us congress district 29 uh, uh, we we'll talked to him about uh, his uh, uh, journey uh, where he started and uh, uh, how he came up up to this stage that today he's running for uh, US Congress Muslims in general uh, have tried uh, a lot in coming in uh, political arena uh, but uh, most of the time they have failed uh, in Houston uh, except one uh, individual MJ Khan who also in my view uh, got elected by default uh, uh, because his opponent uh, was uh, 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 labeled as a uh, bad check writer uh, therefore the people voted for him uh, otherwise so many muslims have tried to run for different offices and they have all failed the reason is being after 911 there is a perception that the muslims are not part of the united states which is not true uh, i live in united states for last 40 years i have given my whole uh, time all my life and my whole Uh, energy is in this country i as a muslim i'm proud that i have been part of the political process and i encourage the young people to come forward and uh, be part of the political system but unfortunately people still uh, are not really recognizing to get muslims elected in public office uh, one main reason why most of the muslims have failed is also uh because they are not following the principles of politics uh they try to make a mockery of uh, american political system which i am personally very against and i've been writing it uh, producing documentaries on the uh, most of the candidates they don't live in the districts where they run from and uh, a lot of the time they are not qualified enough they cannot speak english and they cannot communicate with people so there is very hard for them to get elected but on the contrary there are some candidates recently in pearland there was a lady with a hijab which is kind of a symbolism of muslim woman uh, she got almost uh, close to the winning uh, votes from a very conservative area so which means the people are going to vote for you if you stand for a right thing if you stand for honesty stand for integrity and stand for the public service most of the people who are running for offices they have got their own personal agenda and therefore i am against those candidates who are running for uh, their own uh, personal glory personal bad business uh, benefits uh, and uh, i always discourage this kind of candidates today in my studio i've got uh, mr tahir yawe who has been running a vigorous campaign in uh, houston almost every corner you will see his sign and we'll see the what is it we and how you going to win the elections uh tai welcome in our studio thank you and thank you very much for sparing time to thank come and meet with us and i will uh, understand uh, uh, educationally you have done ba in economics from punjab university in 1987 and uh, you started with dollar stores and then uh, uh, you have so many companies uh, first uh, almost 35 brands uh, you are a a uh, symbol of uh, american dream come true you know uh, people come in here they pursue dreams and uh, first of all tell me how fast how quickly you did it and how did you do it well this is about 30 years of uh, history it didn't happen overnight started uh, my <clears throat> career like anybody else i lived in a trailer house and i worked uh, in convenience stores and flea markets and mop the floors and work as a cashier and it's just like a you know keep on working hard and keep on thinking outside the box and keep on taking my chances in different investments you lose some time you gain some time and uh, i was one of the lucky ones who probably didn't lose as much i gain and i'm you know today 
I have a, a pretty decent size of business, and you know. Congratulations on your success. Tell me something. Uh, you from Beaumont. You have lived your most of your life 19, since 1987 in Beaumont. Almost 30 years you have been there. You never ran for any office over there, and suddenly now you're coming in political arena. And you not only run from the, uh, the place where you're living, you moved to Houston and now you're running a district uh, 29. Uh, my uh, question to you is that you're so new to this district. Mm -hmm. uh, what message you want to give to these people that they should elect you? Why they should elect you? Why not uh, uh, your uh, opponent has lived there 30 years, 40 years, worked there, you know, why they should pick a newcomer, uh, you know, in political arena with no experience and then he comes and want to run for the Congress. Member of uh, District 29's household income is $36,000 today. We only got one hospital, 750,000 population. We should have 10 hospitals there. High school dropout is 41%. And that's very high. Economic development, we are in 429th number in the country, which is what left six districts are worse than us so the things are bad now what I have done I have done my experiments in healthcare in underserved areas and I have done very well in few areas at the same time I have provided jobs which district 29 obviously I'm um, being an individual uh, did not do as much district 29 needed it but if you have the experience you can you know build up your team and you can work with that so what district 29 needed i think i can bring some of my experience and go from there and probably uh, the things will change uh, with the new uh, ideas and new thinking out of the box solutions i have raised money for different good causes and i think we only can make a quick development by raising money and then finding some matching funds which you are master of doing this thing for years and years if you're just depending on federal government or state government to help you then you are basically waiting like everybody else waiting matching funds can give us a little bit quicker uh, solutions to our problems now furthermore my struggle being starting from the bottom immigrant coming here starting with the accent and with not local education and not being you know handouts and not having experience i think majority of the people in district 29 either are first hand or second generation and third generation of the immigrants i think i relate to, i mean enough to the district my story is their story their story is my story and i realize that i can i can offer myself uh, better and easier and plus this district is open. let me ask you one thing you are being seen uh, as a more as a Muslim candidate rather than an American Muslim candidate. Uh, in the past, a lot of American Muslims have contested different elections and they have failed it except uh, one uh, council member who also, in my view, uh, got elected by default, not because of the uh, votes but because a certain situation happened. Uh, so, how you are going to pull this uh, uh, weakness of our community that we are not able to mobilize the people to go to polls uh, though we get a lot of money we uh, raise a lot of money I, under my estimate I think Muslims in general in whole United States have raised about half a billion dollar in last couple elections but we still have no Muslim in the men uh, representing us so how you're going to pull this thing because there is a lot of uh, uh, negativity up to 9-11 against Muslims. Uh, so what kind of things you're going to do to get that out of that uh, feeling in the people that Javed is a Muslim candidate but not an American Muslim. So how are you going to portray? Well, I'm, um, I'm not running as a Muslim candidate. I wanted to make sure everybody understand because if I wanted to put myself out there as a Muslim candidate then I would have uh, picked a, a different district you know as you know that probably I would go to where there are 30 40 50 thousand of them living so I am a progressive Democrat and I wanted to run with this identity 
I have uh, uh, so many Baptist uh, church uh, endorsed me. I have so many Catholic church endorsed me. I have, uh, uh, you know, Vietnam communities endorsed me, so many prominent people, and I have uh, so many other, uh, uh, like, uh, you know, uh, religious groups did. So I will be a, I will be a congressman representing District 29, and, uh, and that's the truth, and that's exactly I'm going to go, and I will serve the people, live in District 29, and I will make sure my priorities are, since in my district, healthcare, education, high pay jobs, and uh, immigration. Have your, uh, your family, everybody moved here, you bought a house, and I understand that yes. you are living yes. here. Yes, sir. You know, your, your kids are going to school here, so you have basically moved everything here? But, uh, yes, sir. I moved here, and uh, me and my wife, uh, we are living in a North Shore area. Kids are already grown. Okay. We're going and grown to universities, and you know. Now, let me tell you, uh, ask you about that. Uh, you, you have a very big success in medical field. And you have opened up uh, closed hospitals uh, in several uh, underdeveloped yes. areas, which is a compliment to you because generally you. the people do not want to serve the poor people. Mm -hmm. You know, they want to live in metropolitan cities and then make big money. And then you are doing this service to the common man. Um, uh, how are you doing this? Are you getting government grants on that, or you are doing on your own, or is this a for-profit uh, hospitals, or they are not not for profit? Well, uh, we have non-profit along with it, which we pick up uh, if the you know people cannot uh, pay, then we can try to help them. But the businesses are for profit. Now, we just, like recently, we have some clinics, uh, uh, you know, just a few uh, time ago, when we realized that uh, there are certain areas, they are absolutely, you don't even uh, think about doing 100% profit. So we using the non-profit and just making 100 percent free clinics free clinics. yes we, we so have, do you get grants from the government no we don't get any grants for the government because i'm not in you know like a, i i get it on my tax uh, you know like a, i take tax breaks on my own because uh, one uh, news item came in that you had a five million dollar grant for one hospital and according to that news item i wanted to clarify that two million dollar was used in your campaign no, that's not so true. That is not true. That is so you never got any grant? No. Oh, that's, that, because this is a news circulating <laughs> that uh, your campaign is being financed from that grant money. So no. that's the reason I want to tell the public that you have uh, not used any public money No. Uh, in the campaign. You are, uh, so you are basically running this on your own, from your own either, money? Either my own money or raised money. Uh, raised account. money. Yes. How much you have raised so far? I believe we raised over half a million dollars. Okay. Which is a very good show. Yes, now one more thing. Uh, now this is within Pakistani community. Mm -hmm. uh, there is a perception. Javed is running uh, to go on the footprints of Senator Sawati. <laughs> okay, because he was somehow your mentor in my understanding is that you want to go in Pakistan and this is your step just to go on a ladder to show to the Pakistani politicians that uh, there is a Tahir uh, Javed which is so close to everybody and all the politicians. So now we need to bring him as a senator or something, a, a, a member of National Assembly in Pakistan. So is that what your uh, second phase will be to go to Pakistan and serve there or <laughs> you really want to serve here? No, I'm not going anywhere. I have already purchased the space for my grave. So I'm staying here. Good. So you will stay here. Absolutely. That's a promise. You are not yes, going to Pakistan. No, absolutely. You are not going to be a senator, right? No. no. <laughs> okay. Recently the article came in, in which they have uh, uh, labeled you as the biggest drug lord, <laughs> sympathizer of uh, uh, ISI, and working for the Pakistan spy agency. Uh -huh. You know, this is something new for me, even when I read that thing. Uh, this is not very recent. This happened to, uh, through the Hillary's election. When I was helping her, and uh, you know, I made a quite a bit difference uh, by raising money, and uh, I was in, you know, very few top raisers. So you were number five. One one of our number top five people. Shot. You raised all the mm -hmm. money. Quite a bit money. So yeah, now yeah. is this out of the jealousy, or they think that? Uh, well, there is yeah. a there is a there is a Republican some Republican coalition fund in Chicago. So they invested money, and they made even videos and. Uh, 
God knows. So, but I basically I was one of the victim where uh, remember that uh, uh, Russians being uh, you know trapping and uh, getting into people's businesses and uh, uh, through cyber uh, attack. So you were attacked. I was one of the the person who was attacked. All my accounts and we we, yeah. we started from scratch and so we just built oh, the same. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, so, uh, but uh, you raised about how much? Uh, about five million dollars for Hillary Clinton, uh, and uh, you I had. A, I a don't know the numbers now, but it was close to that. Which was a very uh, yeah, was big very accomplishment, you know. Yes. And uh, if she would have been elected, you know, we would have seen you in the White House. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, one more report which recently came in that you had a five-year felony conviction uh, on the record, and uh, they just wrote it that. Uh, how come this person is running for Congress, and how can he get access to the U.S. secrets, and how he, you will get a security clearance when you have a five-year conviction? Well, I can. Uh, well, I'm glad you brought that, um, uh, Mehmet Sab. Thank you very much. Uh, all I can tell you, I was on uh, Hillary Clinton's uh, national uh, finance team. I was vetted. I was on her national advisory council later on. And I was vetted very well at that time too. And all I can tell you is, uh, this is a report as of uh, February 15, 2018. I have no record. No record. Zero record. So the only record I have, Mehman Saab, is record of creating jobs, record of helping in Harvey, record of uh, bringing healthcare in underserved areas and record of helping people. I want to see this document. Yes, Maybe we should uh, show it to the audience that... Uh, uh, can, uh, can you shoot this uh, thing which shows that uh, he is clear from all the conviction? Uh, that's a very great thing what you Thank do, you, you know, to uh, tell the people. But one more uh, news they had it. Now again, it will be connected with the same thing. Mm -hmm. But if you are not convicted, of course, uh, you, when you are applying for a pharmacy license, yeah, you are in your application uh, on the loans and the grants. They're claiming you know, I did not write. They you so, but, but again, if you this say, is the truth. Uh, <laughs> so what you're saying that there was never a conviction or never a felony. That's exactly uh, what yeah. this document says, and you know, you guys have the picture of that, and I'm glad. You have the picture, you can show it to anybody. One more thing which I wanted to clarify is about this company, Royal Smoke LLC. Mm -hmm. uh, I understand that FDA closed your operation of that company. Not true. Uh, what happened? Nothing uh, tell happened. The, uh, there's the, nothing, there's no, there's no background to it. Uh, they're saying no. that uh, you were producing a tobacco product which was... Uh, uh, how could a tobacco product can go to under 18? Uh, because that's what they are alleging that you were promoting this uh, uh, kind of a smoke which uh, underage people can buy it. Well, first but of the all... The tobacco has no. to be under over 18, right? Well, first of all, this is not true, okay? Now, second thing is that this was one of the product which is you do the prevention of smoking. So, you want to quit smoking, so you use that. And now, there is, there is it's just a machine it has no product in it. When you go and buy the product, you would show your license. So what were you selling basically? What it were was you like an electronic... Uh, uh, electronic cigarettes. Electronic cigarettes. Oh, yeah. okay. But so, that... I mean, electronic cigarette doesn't have anything in it. So, but we still had the disclaimer on it that you, uh, uh, you have to, uh, you have to be 18 to purchase it. But so there so why, why did they blame you? Nothing what? happened. Nothing happened to me. So they are fabricating this story? It's, this is absolutely false. Uh, one more thing uh, somebody told me was that uh, were you involved in uh, any importing of cigars from Dominican Republic? Well, yes, I did uh, uh, import cigars from Dominican no, Well, I did not import cigars. I purchased cigars which was imported by Dominican Republic. So were they from Cuba? No, no, they, they were an embargo on Cuban cigars no. when they coming through Dominican Republic. No, no, no. Dominican Republic cigar. It's not that those, those fancy cigars. No, yeah. which one was that? It was just like an uh, everyday deal. So you were uh, uh, buying from uh, Dominican Republic and selling on your store. You were a wholesaler, right? Yeah, we were wholesaler. So as a wholesaler, you would not know where 
No, no, it's every product says on it where it's made. Yeah. So it's no. Yeah, because generally, you know, I tell the people that all the Dominic uh, Republic uh, cigars, they are actually Cuban cigars. Well, they get labeled. They are actually, you know, not your fault, you know, everybody says. No, no, but that's not what it was. Yeah. Uh, Because, listen, I had convenience stores. And obviously, you had convenience stores. So when you're selling, you are selling, you know, the products in convenience stores, which is like, uh, you know, not, not for the rich people. So this is not anywhere close to what you think. It was a cheaper, cheaper brand. Yeah, it's, yeah. It's yeah. Tell me something. Why District 29 people should vote for you? Well, District 29 people should vote for me because uh, I will definitely, uh, I'm already working on bringing health care. We have uh, four plus uh, free clinic up and running right now. We are in uh, District 29. In District 29. Okay. Where are those? Uh, in the church-based clinic. It's four different churches. Church-based. They provided me the space, and I provided all the doctors and okay. nurses and everything. So uh, then I have uh, done started the uh, like urgent care in uh, Glenna Park. Okay. So city. Yeah, I saw the grand opening. Right, okay. did the yeah. grand opening. I am speaking to a couple of hospitals to reopen them, which is shut down due to Harvey. Now. I'm not elected yet. I'm already working. Imagine when I get elected, how much more effort I can put together. I believe this is the first time they have seen anybody working without in the office as much elected people are. I think I'm the hope. I think I'm the future for District 29. And they, if they give me the chance to to serve, I will make sure that I will make a difference in the okay. district. My only suggestion would be make sure that... Uh, a uh, lot of uh, uh, Asians have been in trouble uh, with uh, fake uh, Medicaid billing and all that. Uh, you need to be very careful with that. I don't want to see, uh, because sometimes I feel ashamed that my Muslim brothers, they get arrested for uh, doing these frauds. Uh, I think it's a great achievement what you have it. Thank so many you, hospitals. Thank you very and, much. And, you know, when you serve the poor people, God is going to bless you. Sure. And, you know, our prayers are with you that, you know, Thank you, Minister, and uh, good luck with your election, and uh, thank you for your time. Thank you very much for your time.